Hey guys, it's me Annie. Today I wanted to show you what it was like going into work as an essential worker during the shelter-in-place mandate in the Bay Area. I filmed these clips on my last day of work because I wanted to make sure I completed all of my responsibilities before even attempting to make this video. Also, I swapped out any paperwork that could potentially have private health information with fake binders and papers to protect the PHI of my clients. So the first thing that I do when I get to my office is to check my voicemails and usually I have voicemails from clients or other case managers in the city requesting information of some sort or needing assistance of some kind. The next thing I do is check my emails and respond to them. I like to get these done first thing in the morning so that I don't miss anything urgent. Now this next step is the most important step for me at least, which is to review what I need to do today. And if I'm seeing or talking to clients, I review their charts to make sure that everything is up to date, that there's no missing information, and I give myself a sort of a refresher on what that client's needs are at this time. And then as you can see, I'm jumping into a phone session. While my job title was a therapist, at this particular time, the agency was in need of an intake assessor since the previous one had quit. So I spent a lot of time interviewing clients to be enrolled in the agency by filling out forms, asking background questions, explaining program guidelines and rules, and obtaining verbal consent for various agency-wide, county-wide, statewide forms. There's a lot of forms. After the intake, I dive straight into documenting the intake. You'll see here and further down in the video that documentation is a huge part of being a mental health worker, social worker, therapist, whatever your title may be at a behavioral health center. Documentation could include opening the client in the database, adding information gathered during the intake, filling out forms online, sending admin preliminary forms to be sent to the county. There's a lot of documentation for sure. And a lot of times I get phone calls. A phone call I could get is crisis management. An interesting part of working in the past few weeks was that sometimes our clients who may not have phones were not aware that we were no longer having face-to-face -face sessions. So being pretty much the only employee in the office, one of my responsibilities was that whenever the doorbell rang indicating that a client was here or somebody was at the door, I would meet them at the door, inform them of the agency's COVID-19 response, aka no more face-to-face -face sessions until further notice, and I assisted the client at the door, whether they needed medical attention or mental health attention, aka other resources, and of course, I continued to wash my hands and use sanitizer throughout the day to protect myself. Throughout my day, I always try to organize what tasks I need to complete for the day and in what order and it not only helps me to stay organized but also to leave work at work. I always, always leave work at work and trust me, that took time and practice. Whether it's a phone call or an in-person redirection of a client or a phone call to a client's counselor, I email the people involved in those clients' care and I document my interaction with the client. Documentation might seem kind of like a headache, but I understand why it's necessary. There's this term that I've always heard since social work school and it's called the golden thread of care. And this pretty much makes sure that all of an agency or a provider's interactions are documented, not only for the sake of billing, because you know, you gotta realize hospitals and behavioral health centers are also businesses, but also so that no clients fall through the cracks. I don't know how many times I would go through some clients charts and certain people were just never followed up with and there was no documentation and no one knew what happened to that client and I, at least for myself with my clients, don't want that to happen, ever. Another call I could get are clients who may need case management. And yeah, more documentation, you get the idea by this point. A lot of clinicians find their own flow when it comes to balancing documentation and the piles of paperwork, but for me, it's always worked best just to be on top of documentation at all time, just so I don't fall behind, but also that I could be as accurate as I can in my documentation. So San Francisco has been on lockdown for about three weeks now. I no longer work at this job due to some personal reasons. I was also the only staff who was not approved for work from home because of this reason. I felt 
a lot of things about that, especially because of my own anxiety about being alone in the office. It was really scary at times going into the city that felt like an absolute ghost town. But through the hard work I did, I felt really honored to be able to finish off my time at this job, putting in work to help my community. Because at the end of the day, that's all that mattered. Whatever about the company, whatever about work from home, I was able to do what I wanted to do, which was to help people. And I know for sure that I did. Thank you for watching. Stay safe. Thank you.